MasterChef has come to Ireland in search of the country's top amateur chefs. A gruelling process of challenges that will push each contestant to their very limits. It's the ultimate in cooking. And judging it will be two of Ireland's foremost culinary figures. Michelin star chef Dylan McGrath. It'll be really interesting to see what sort of talent is out there. And restaurateur Nick Mounier. To be able to sort of take and nurture these home amateur cooks, but turn them into chefs. Now that is what I'm really excited to do. From over a thousand applications, 10 great chefs remain. I really want to stay in this competition till the end. I would love to win it. I don't think I'd be happy going out at any point, really. To date, the contestants have got through a tough audition round. I think you can really cook, so welcome to MasterChef. They have survived putting their personality on a plate. I'm not going to finish now. Last time, they cooked for the experts. A hake died for no reason today. All have battled for their lives. It's a minute to plate it up, a minute. In the quest for the MasterChef Ireland title and the chance to win €25,000 in prize money. Every one of them are desperate to keep their hands on their Master Chef aprons. No, I love it. Oh my god. After this challenge, only nine will remain. And this is their first challenge outside the Master Chef kitchen. Just the chaos in the kitchen is just incredible. Yeah, just not knowing where everything is is a, is a nightmare. Who will be the next to return their apron and end their Master Chef dream? Hello and welcome to Ballyfin, County Leash. Today is your first off-site challenge. Tonight, Ballyfin House will be hosting a cocktail party for 40 guests under the direction of executive chef Fred Cordonnier. You will be responsible for preparing 10 canapes. But there's going to be a little twist. There's going to be two teams so it's going to be the red team versus the blue team. Mike, we have decided you're going to lead the red team. From Limerick, Mike is 37, a very keen amateur cook whose day job is as a district manager for Extravision. Christine, you're going to lead the blue team. Christine is 21 and has been in a professional kitchen before today, as her parents owned a restaurant in County Cork. Mike, will you please choose your team, one person at a time? Regine? I don't know why he picked me. I should hope it's because of my cooking ability. I'm very competitive and he knows that and I'll be in it to win it and I'll want our team to win and our team to perform, so I'll try and help him along with that. Christine? Shane. I picked Shane firstly. He really has an amazing ability, great knowledge for food, and I thought he would be a good member of the team. I think I made a good decision. Mike, will you please choose your next person? Connell. I like Connell, the way he thinks, his food, the way the combinations come together, and how he executes everything. OK, Christine. Mary. I'm delighted that you picked me, um, and I think we've got a very strong team, so it, it's a bit unnerving, the fact that, you know, we're put on two separate teams, because I'm kind of conscious that if I make a mistake, it's not just my neck that's on the line, it's the rest of the team as well, which, you know, adds a bit more pressure. Claire and Richard, we have to win this thing. I whispered in his ear about, you know, who he should pick and who, who the other contestants should be, um, but I think at the end of the day, you've got 10 very strong contestants. Mike? Claire Ann. Everyone he picked is perfect. I couldn't have chosen better, so really good team, very confident. 
going to win this thing. Christine? Richard. <laughs> it wasn't great to be picked down the batting order, as it were. I was picked third last. It's an indication of where your teammates rank you. If they think I'm down the pecking order, they'll find out that I'm not. All right, please choose your last person. Pierce. I'm really looking forward to today's challenge. Looking forward to getting into a professional kitchen and doing a bit of cooking. I'm pretty confident. I think we'll give the Blues a good run for their money anyway. Yarek, come and join Christine's team. It doesn't bother me that I was picked last. Someone had to pick first and someone had to pick last. It makes no difference for me at all. Teams, it's now early morning and your guests are arriving at four o'clock. We have plenty to do. We please now go and meet Chef Fred for your instructions. And good luck to both of you. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Ballyfin. So let's go and get cracking. Follow me. Ballyfin House Hotel sits at the foothills of the Schlieve Bloom Mountains in County Leash. The house is one of the most lavish Regency mansions in Ireland. Built in the 1820s, its recent restoration took eight years, and after reopening earlier this year, it is now regarded as one of the country's most exclusive venues. Executive chef is Fred Cordonnier, who's had a career honed in Michelin star restaurants. From the south of France to London, Fred has perfected his craft, working with chefs like Bruno Lube and Raymond Blanc. Since moving to Ireland, Fred has worked in the K-Club, Longvile House and Patrick Gibos. He's going to take each team individually for a masterclass in their five different canapes. Each person will execute their own and make 40 of each. Teams will prepare four savoury and one sweet canapé. First into Fred's kitchen is Mike and the red team. OK, I have to give you one canapé per person. Some of you will have a little bit more to do, some a little bit less, so you can work as a team. You will benefit from each other and learn new skills from all those different recipes. Today's challenge, this is exactly why I came into MasterChef. What a venue, what a chef, what food. This, this is why we're here. Mike, as a team leader, will be doing the beef tartare. I'm going to be doing the beef tartare with a quail's egg on top and a little crispy brioche. When it's time to send the canapes, the food will not go out if it's not the way you see it there. They will not pass the pass if they're not up to standard. This is very important. Breeding, you'll be doing the escargot on coquille, which is the snails. I'm doing the escargot. Never cooked escargot. I've eaten lots of them, though, so hopefully it'll work out fine. Frog legs for you. Very traditional French. I'm actually doing a pan-fried frog's leg, lollipop, and then i got to prep 40 frog's legs, so that's going to take a bit of time as well. <laughs> Claire Anne will be doing the cucumber on salmon. It's a little cucumber jelly, and then it's marinated Irish salmon, and a little bit of sour cream. And what we do is we smoke it. So just before it goes to the guests, we're going to smoke it. We're going to use what I call is a smoke gun. Today I'm cooking a cucumber jelly that's topped with cured salmon that has the exciting ingredient of smoke trapped in the top of it. Out comes this amazing hickory smoke. And Pierce will be doing the dessert, which will be served last, obviously. Uh, it's basically it's a chocolate lollipop. Inside it, we put a chocolate ganache. Today I've been assigned the raspberry chocolate lollipop. It's not something that I would normally choose to do, so I'm looking forward to giving it a go today. Welcome, guys. Blue team. Thank you. How are you? Good. Looking forward to seeing what we're doing? Yeah, absolutely. Right, that's it? <laughs> Great. <laughs> Fantastic. So, Christine? Yep. You're the leader. You'll be doing the foie gras on fig dish. So, basically, this is a foie gras. Basically, it's a liver of a duck. And then what goes on the top is, is a fig puree. Close it, and it's ready to go. I think our final team is fantastic. I think we're all in it to win it. Everyone's enthusiastic, energetic, and is just ready to get into the kitchen. I think we all believe in our hearts that we can win it, you know, and I, I hope that I can do them proud and, you know, lead them well. Mary, you'll be doing the liquid hard-boiled egg, which is this one here. What I do is I put it into a canister, and then what I do is you fill it up. <laughs> So it becomes nice and creamy. I have done cafes before, but never to the standard and never on the scale. So, uh, you know, I've definitely tasted them before. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Richard, you'll be doing the oysters, the Irish oysters. 
I was a little disappointed with the dish that I got to make. It was incredibly simple, very few elements to it. Simple, very, very simple. Yeah. And that's it. Like, my cat could have made that dish. It really was that easy. Yarek, you'll be doing the sea ocean scramble eggs. You're from Poland, yeah? I'm from Poland, yeah. I've never seen You're anything like that in my life. So they look prickly on everything, but you can touch them. Yes, there is something inside. We use it in scramble eggs. When I first came over to Ireland, I didn't know English at all. I got a job as a kitchen porter. I walked my way up from kitchen porter to um, assistant manager for the last seven years. Absolutely oh, lovely. Yeah. It's a strong taste. Or... Mm. I like it. I really love cooking, and master chef is the first step to become a professional chef. Well, ah. And that's it. And I hope I win. That's what I'm here for. Shane, you'll be doing the dessert, which is strawberries, yuzu cream, and vanilla foam. It's like sweet shaving cream. <laughs> I think both teams are very, very strong. It's going to be a tough challenge. They're all excellent cooks. Voila. But hopefully, blue team will do it. Best of luck, and I'll see you later on. Thank you. Thanks. See you later. Thank you. I think it's a, the right task at the right point that we're at in the competition. It's a great, great place for us to see who's got leadership skills, who takes the flag and runs with it, or who doesn't. I just hope that we get the best out of them today and that they learn something from today. Come on, come on, lads. Let's go on the red team on that side, blue team on this side. Yes, chef. One o'clock and prep starts. Guests will arrive for a 4 p.m. champagne and canapes reception, so there's no time to waste. Leader of the red team is 37-year-old dad of two, Mike from Limerick. We're getting on okay. There's an awful lot of prep done. A lot, lot more than we expected. But I think we're on top of our workload at the moment. Quite a lot to do, but we'll get there eventually. The blue team leader is 21-year-old University of Limerick architectural student, Christine. OK, guys, um, we have two and a half hours. This hour is the first hour. Then we have another hour and a half before service. OK, we'll just get as much as we can done in terms of prep, and then we'll see where we are then after that, all right? Yarek, how are you doing? Have you got your ingredients? Yeah. Richard, have you got your ingredients? I have. Have you been downstairs, Shane? You have someone down there is getting stuff for everyone, OK? Grab a box, okay. and you'll be sorted, all right? Sorry now. Um, at the moment, everyone's at different phases. Everyone knows what their first step is, their second step is, third step is. It's very important that people keep on track and just keep talking to each other, you know? If people need a hand, we'll jump in, we'll help, there's no problem. Uh, just need to stay on track, basically. So I think just once we do that and we're, we're focused, we should be fine. On the red team, Scottish-born Claire Anne is responsible for the only fish canapes that they are preparing. I'm just um, measuring out my cucumber jelly that I've made. So once I get this in, I'm going to pop these in the fridge and then I'll move on to the salmon cure and then get my quenelle sorted. On the blue team, 43-year-old Richard is responsible for one of their fish canapes. I was a little bit frustrated, to be honest. I was a little disappointed with the dish that I got to make. I was under no pressure at all. I felt like a bit of a spare part, but it was pretty simple. Basically just chuck an oyster and throw some, you know, pretty much like a granita, which is just frozen slush puppy, basically, on top of it. You know, in terms of the, the kind of cooking that the rest of the guys were doing, like, I wasn't getting to do that, and I found that, you know, a little frustrating. Richard, Richard, how are you? Yeah. Are you, you? Do you need somebody on board? Pardon? You need somebody on board? Because I'm, I'm, I'm around. Are you? What are you at? Chicken oysters. Oh, yeah, no, as in what number it was? Finished. Are you? Savage. How are you getting on? Finished. Oh, well done. She's mm -hmm. great. Has anyone got a spare minute? No? Richard? I'm, uh... Are you in the middle of something? Yeah. Is Richard free? No. You're not? Not no one's. I'm going to take these chairs, parsley and chives. Earlier this morning, red team leader Mike picked 28-year-old Bridgeen first. And at the moment, she's the driving force on their team. Do you need all those eggs, Mary? Um, I need 12 eggs. And well, can I take some of them, then? Um, can I get some smoked bacon, please? And castor sugar, please? Um, Mike, we need more shallots. Do you want to start cutting these? Anybody got free hands there? Are we all too busy? Mike, I need some parsley yes, chopped. Yeah, I need I need 100 grams. I think I can be single-minded in what I want to do. 
You know, I'm not scared of a challenge. Like I cycled to Electric Picnic last year and I'd never planned, and that was like 70K. Jumped on my bike and then said, yeah, I can do this. Mike, how are you going the parsley? Mike? Yes? How are you going the parsley? A uh, couple of minutes away. Good work, guys. We're doing well. Mike, papers and Dijon. Are you OK, Eric? You yeah, 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 yeah. OK, good. Yeah, you call if you need help, all right? Yeah, I will. That's not the I will. Over on the blue team, Polish national Jarek is tackling the sea urchin with scrambled eggs. Um, at the moment, I'm trying to open the um, um, sea urchin, which I've, I've never done before. And it's quite challenging for me because the shells are very, very hard and they're cracking. I have to open 40 of them. i only done maybe seven, eight. I have to be careful to not crack this um, uh, suit in half because this has to be used as a, as a plate. We'll be serving in, in this. 1.30 and everyone is busy pulling the elements of their dishes together. They now have just two hours until Fred wants them to present a sample of their canapes before service starts at 4 p.m. How are you getting on with those frog legs? Yeah, pretty good. On the red team, 38-year-old Connell is preparing the frog's legs and has picked up the technique quite quickly. It's not as hard as I thought it was going to be, actually. I thought I'd have to bone it with a knife, but you showed me a technique with your hand, which is sort of like, OK, you start off by cutting the frog at the hip, and then you take it, push the skin down like that. Not very pleasant, but um, pretty effective, so that's all you need to do. It sits like that. Where are you at now? I'm chopping up my eggs. I'm okay. I'm, and looking, I'm in good shape. Okay, so you have your garnishes ready. You've got your spring onion ready. Yeah. Okay, so will I give you a call at the ten minute mark? Waterford-born Mary is attempting the liquid hard-boiled egg, the most complicated dish on the blue menu. It is hard. It's quite technical, so it's it is a challenge. The pressure is going to be right the way through. Yeah. Just not knowing where everything is is a, is a nightmare. But while preparing her parsley sauce, Mary runs into a technical problem. Whoa, 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 that's a three grand machine, yeah? Sorry. Three um, grand, it cost me this. Okay. You don't move the boil on the top, you just switch it on. That's it, don't shake the boil. I don't want to hear shit. Don't shake the boil. 15 minutes, guys, I need to see one sample of each dish. I hold and you pipe, all right? Okay. So we get a system going. All right, yeah, you leave it there. You, leave. You, you fill up your piping bag, all right, and then I'll go. OK. 2 p.m., and Mike is struggling with all the elements of his canapes. He needs to place the beef tartare on the brioche, then top with a quail's egg. Delegate, delegate your team there. You need a hand on the tartare. You give a hand to the girl to do the tartare. Okay. With Mike under pressure to plate up 40 beef tartars, Claire Anne and Bridgine are enlisted to help. We had, uh, I think it was three, four people free, and everybody chipped in, so we took different parts of it. You know, it was just a little uh, conveyor belt of staff, and everybody was putting their work in, and it just came together really nice. Pierce, who to date in the competition has never cooked anything sweet, is on the red team's dessert. At the moment, I'm making a ganache for the chocolate lollipops, and then fill little uh, chocolate lollipop molds with, uh, with the ganache mixture. Meanwhile, Shane is struggling with his creme anglaise for the blue team's dessert canapes of strawberries with a yuzu foam. I've never done creme anglaise before, so I'm a bit worried about it. OK, guys, in five minutes, I want one sample of each on the pass. On the, uh, on the pass needs to be cleaned up as well, yeah? Yes, chef. As Pierce puts the finishing touches on his raspberry ganache lollipops, Shane is not having as much success with the blue team's dessert. How much cream have you got there? Uh, just under 250. We need 250, no? You need 250? Well, what's the recipe? 250 and 250. 250 milk, 250 cream. Yeah, but they, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. There's eggs inside there. There's eggs. You're... Can this you... is gone. This yeah. is gone. Yeah. It goes in the bin. Yep. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Can I put this down the drain? Yeah. yeah. With only half an hour to go before service, Shane starts his creme anglaise again. Where was you? I go over there to the pastry section there, over there, yep. and wake you man up. He's falling asleep in the strawberries. Okay. Shane, where are we at? We're going to be plating up in five minutes. I'll give you a call, all right? No, is sorry. all your stuff on trays? Yeah, no, it is. It's on trays. Okay, three minutes to go, guys. Yark, you need to get your eggs on, all right? 
the 10 remaining MasterChef contestants are on their first off-site challenge in Ballyfin House, County Leash. They've had to prepare French canapes for an afternoon champagne reception where their guests will ultimately judge the winning team. They really have to look the part. When they come out on the tray, guests want to pick it up. They want to pick up those canopies and enjoy them. And also, canopies are a way of sort of stimulating the senses for the, the treats that are going to come with the, the courses after. Nothing can fall short. When you've only got two or three components to a little canopy, each, each component has to stand alone and be executed properly. And that's where they need to start understanding flavours, technique, how these great ingredients work well together. I think we'd be interested to see who actually pulls it off today. That's what they're doing off the page. Each of the guests will be asked to score the canapes individually, and at the end of the reception, they will be asked to vote for their favourite team, red or blue. Presentation is very important, so I look forward to a good presentation. I haven't tasted the French canapé in a long time, <laughs> but I still have the French palais, so I'm looking forward to it, definitely. Uh, crispy frog legs. I've never tried them before. So, looking forward to this dish. Mm, liquid hard-boiled egg as well. Can't wait to taste that. You know, it sounds really uh, absolutely amazing, you know. With all the guests eagerly awaiting their canapes, there is nothing left to do but for Chef Fred to taste all of them to make sure he's happy to send them into the room. First up are Richard's oysters. OK, oysters. I have the oysters. I need to taste the salmon next. OK, the granny tastes good. OK, the oyster is good, perfect, well done. Okay. Organic salmon, please. OK, the flavour is very good, OK? Thanks, Fred. Crispy frog legs, please. Okay. We didn't season the frog legs. There's no seasoning whatsoever. Salt. So what we do we put a little bit of a fleur de sel, yeah, just before we sand it. Okay. Just on the top, yeah. No, I need to taste uh, a chocolate lollipop, please, and the strawberry dessert. Thank you very much, Pierce. It's very good. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Tiny little bit. A little drop from the balsamic. A little bit more. Yes, chef. OK. Thank well you. The ocean. Snails will be next. Thank you. Seasoning is good, yeah? It's very good. Thank you, chef. Okay, well done. Very good. Excellent. Escargot. Yes. Yes, nice. very good. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. A little bit more seasoning in the beef. Otherwise, it's okay. Excellent. Thanks, Fred. Now, Christine's foie gras parfait. Okay, Christine. Yes. Did you taste it? Yes. Are you happy with it? Yes. I want you to grab a, a spoon and I want you to, uh, to have a test. I really like it. You really like it? Yeah. Well, it's, it's too salty. We won't be able to serve this. Really? Yes, really. It's too salty. Okay, we need to make another recipe quickly, okay. very, very quickly, mm -hmm. and re season it. Yes? Yes, Chef. Get going with it, yeah? Absolutely, yeah. Yes, Chef. With only 15 minutes before service, and with all her canapes to do again, Christine has enlisted the help of Shane and Mary. OK, I'll start washing these soap. Guys, how are we going to... We're going to use oven mousse here. Okay, cool. 
Just put this in a blender, okay? We're ready to go. One minute plate up, guys, all right? Christine busily pulls her dish together as the first canapes leave the kitchen. First canapé will be the oysters, okay? How long the service? 30 seconds. Trays of canapes from each team will leave the kitchen at the same time, accompanied by red or blue napkins. The guests will be asked at the end of the night to vote with either a red or a blue poker chip for their favourite team's canapes. This jelly doesn't have any flavour or any taste. It just looks like a plastic. I had a bit of a dread of the old oyster, to be honest. That was my first time to taste oysters. It's beautiful, wasn't it? Yes, absolutely. No, I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. Excuse me, excuse me. Excuse me. Bridgine is up to the pass next with her escargot. Yeah? Okay, see how it is? That's it. I enjoyed this meal. I thought it had a nice buttery garlic flavour. Lacked a, a, a little bit of punch. Time is nearly up for Yarrick, who is next and will need to present all of his sea urchins at the pass. Sea urchin, chef. Took a second, into taste. Can I get the sea urchin now? Okay, I guys, let's now. get, let's... Now! Come on, chef! Now! Guys, do you get them up while you're Bring them up, all right? Just bring them up. So am I guys, bring them up, bring them up, bring them up. Bring them up. Let's go. I like it very much. It has a scramble eggs feel about it. It's really balanced. I think it's really delicate, very nice. Soft, I just thought it's just very watery. Mm. Yeah, very homely. While Christine's new batch of parfait steam, she's helping Mary put the final touches on her liquid hard boiled eggs. Okay, one minute, I'm on the eggs on the pass. Okay, let's go, let's go. Yes, chef. Okay, those eggs ready, girls? Yes, yes, they're ready. All right, let's go. Yes. Okay, two more. One more. Happy? No, not yet, chef. Okay, let's go. Aniba. In the brew team. Yeah. Well, my first reaction was how you could have a liquid hard boiled egg, uh, but I'd have to say it's very, very tasty. It's it's totally different. And it's uh, very tasty. Yeah, that's good. Connell now needs to present 40 cooked and complete crispy frog's legs with parsley and garlic. How are they looking, Chef? Are they okay? Nearly there. Nearly there? Nearly there. Patience. Okay, we're going to start plating. Start going around that way, okay? It's a lovely combination, isn't it? Yeah, it's really complicated. The red team are just slightly edging it thanks to the crispy frog's legs with the mousse that was just superb. Christine and her helpers have nearly finished her second batch of foie gras parfait, fig puree, and marinated figs. Has the chef checked that mousse? Um, yeah, or is that the same that salty mousse that he told you? It's a different mousse. Yeah. Check it with the chef. Check it with the chef. Can you taste this? All right, let's get this in the oven now as soon as we can, all right? Oh, deep breaths, deep breaths. Yeah, just slightly over season, and I have to redo it again. So I'm literally in the last half an hour doing it again. So in about five minutes, we'll go with the tartare. I can't do anything about it, really hope for the best, you know? <laughs> We just gotta stay positive, keep the team motive going. So yeah, no, I mean, we'll be okay. We'll be okay. Oh yes, that's that's number one. Absolutely, that's delicious. In fact, can I have some more? The flavor was really nice, but the texture was wrong. It was too liquid. Come on, lads, I need those tartars. Hopefully they were happy, but I think as a team we came together and that's more important than any individual performance.
what we just had there now, that was gorgeous. Grey leg was cooked to perfection. The beef tartare could have been cut up a little bit more. Mm. I had a few capers, but not an awful lot. And the brioche was fantastic. All the savoury canapes are out, and now it's time for Pierce to complete his chocolate lollipops and Shane's strawberries with yuzu foam. You ready with your dessert, yeah? Strawberries in the glass is cream ready to go, OK? Service, s'il vous plaît. Thank you, team. Won't be doing those again in a hurry. Oh. <laughs> All canapes have been served, and now the contestants can only hope that they've done enough to win a vote from the guests. I was torn between the blue and the red, but the dessert and the steak tartare made it final. The blue team strawberries I thought were absolutely beautiful. It was very, very close up to this. Uh, I'll just have to check the scorecard again now. The following morning, back in the MasterChef kitchen. Good morning, and well done on your first day spent in a professional kitchen. Thank you. Thank you. Whatever happened inside the kitchen, it was certainly your guests that decided who did the best canapes on the day. As the guests were leaving, we asked them to vote. A red chip for the red team, and a blue chip for the blue team. And the results are in. Eleven for the blue and twenty-two for the red. Congratulations, red team. You worked as the most cohesive team and the result, the most enjoyed canopies. Both teams had all of the attributes of a winning formula. However, it was the team who behaved like a team that won the competition. We can't blame it on the leadership because Christine tried all day long. It was as if her team just wouldn't gel with her in the way that the other guys did. Mike, congratulations to you and your team. Well done, Mike. For that, will you please take the rest of the day off and leave the room and hang up your aprons? Happy days. <laughs> yes. Good luck, guys. Wow, I mean that's that's phenomenal. I mean, great compliments, great team, <laughs> happy days. <laughs> Blue team, will you please go out and get into your MasterChef aprons? A uh, bit disappointed. Nobody wants to be in this position. But, you know, we just have to work our hardest now and we'll remain strong and we'll keep going. I'm sick to my stomach, I'm so nervous. Yeah, I'm just hoping that I'll be able to produce a good, good plate of food and no matter what the circumstances and no matter what the challenge is. I'm disappointed with what Dylan said about the teamwork because I actually don't think that was in any way true. I did th think we worked well together. Um, feeling nervous. Um, I don't know what's going to happen in the next couple of minutes. What are they preparing for us? I'm sure I can create some dish. Um, hopefully that we like it. In front of you is a mystery box full of French ingredients. You have to cook something to keep you in the competition. 
You can use as many or as few ingredients as you want, but the aim is to impress us. You have one hour to cook to keep your place in MasterChef. Contestants, please reveal your ingredients. In the mystery boxes are one donut peach, figs, a lemon, French vanilla pod, a brioche, and some mature San Moore goat's cheese, one whole dorad fish, one saddle of rabbit, slices of bay on ham, rat potatoes, and finally French herbs, thyme and chervil. I'm terrible in those scenarios, like, you know, I, I like to have things planned out in my head and what I'm doing and what I'm aiming, because it's really tough when you only have an hour and they're like, go, and you spend at least five to 10 minutes of that deciding what you're gonna do. When you're under time pressure, you know, it's really intense. You just think, look, I have to start something, you know, I've got to get something going. How are you coping? I'm doing okay. This pressure kind of thing on the spot thing doesn't do me any good because I like to think out things a lot. Okay. So I'm just kind of like, oh, maybe I've done the wrong thing. That's, ki that's kind of the point, Christine. Yeah, I know it is the point, I know, I know, and I have to deal with it, but yeah. uh, fingers crossed. Christine is completely out of her depth. The, the mindset yesterday with the small canapes was that everything had to look good, tasty, yeah. and that it had to be technically cooked correctly. So yeah. if they use those principles today, yeah. they should produce a good dish. Yeah. I stood there for five minutes at least, wondering what I was going to do. An hour to cook when you know the recipe is tough enough. It's a really, really tough challenge. What do you think of the ingredients? Uh, a lot of choice there. You know, you yeah. can go a lot, of, a lot of different ways. Yeah. Um, but I, I just decided to cook a, cook a really nice piece of fish, okay. perfectly to point. Yeah. Lovely seasoned, cubed yeah. potatoes, yeah. and then a classic hollandaise, just to give it a bit of uh, okay. wetness. Okay. Are you going to use any of the other ingredients? No, I'm just going to. I'm just going to go. I'm just going to go, go with go with go with that. Keep it keep it keep it simple. I really I really a lot there, but I mean I just want to do it get something classic and hopefully tasty. It's interesting that Richard has decided to completely boycott most of the box <laughs> and go with a piece of fish. Um, that's a good thing. It is going to be really simple. But again, if you really... Maybe too looks, simple. The task is to cook French food. So I'd be interested to see, has he pulled that off? You're half an hour in, so you have 30 minutes left. It's not an easy thing to cook off against the team that you've worked with. I mean, it's going to be difficult. So I don't know what the outcome will be. Tell us quickly, what's the plan? The plan is to saddle a rabbit. Yeah. Uh, stuff it, um, trying to make uh, potato rosti. And this is the uh, rosti. This is the rosti. Shane is a bit confused at the moment, I think. Yeah. The wrapping everything, the, the stuffing everything, you don't have to do that. You know, keep the ingredient that it is and showcase that ingredient. That's what we've been saying since the start. I like figs and parma ham and goat cheese together. That's a combination that I'm familiar with and I actually really like. So I thought, okay, I can do something with that. How are you getting on? Good. What I've done is I've um, whipped up the, the goat's cheese because I want to kind of um, make quenelles and I'm going to toast the brioche, serve it with um, parma ham, figs. No, no, parma ham. Or, uh, bit, sorry. That's all right. Um, and a um, compote of peach with, um, with figs as well. Yeah, well, we look forward to tasting that. Okay, hope you like it. Thanks, very I love the way Mary looks at ingredients. That she understands the flavours there, what she's using. Yeah. That, I think, is really yeah, She's gone good, with the fruit, know? she's gone with the ham. She has stayed away completely from the, from the meat and fish, other than, obviously, the, the, the boy on ham. Which I think is good, though, in a way. I think that's the most exciting dish for me at the moment. Guys, you have six minutes left. And may I stress that if it's not ready on the plate, myself and Dylan will not be tasting your dishes. How are you coping, OK? Um, yeah, I think I'm doing OK. Um, I'm going to cook for you rabbit wrapped up in the pancetta, served with um, caramelized peach, with brioche, with blue cheese, and with uh, fig. That's my plan for now. Thanks, Yarek. Thank you. Yarek is very unsure of those ingredients. Shooting in the dark. Yarek has brought some great flavors together in the past, so he has shown an understanding to date. I know what I'm hoping for, yeah. whether or not that's what comes out the other side. That's why I'm so looking forward to tasting everything today. Guys, one minute left.
Guys, time up. Please stop cooking. Stop everything. Okay, Christine, bring up your dish. I'm very worried now, but we'll just have to see what way the judges think. Christine has wrapped her dorad fillets in bayon ham, served on a bed of mash with a chervil and goat's cheese butter sauce. The only concern I will have is, is that, you, you know, your fish is very overcooked. Yeah. yeah, you put it in way too early. And what happened to you today, from what I can see, is, you know, the ingredients got on top of you. And it definitely affected your time, and the pressure got on top of you. Really you know, did. If, I, if I was to be constructive for you as well, you got to handle the pressure. You can cook, so don't let the pressure phase you. You know, at the end of the day, absorb that and channel it. I like the way that you've sort of used ingredients to hand. You have so many there to choose from, so you could have quite easily have confused everything. Potato works well. Yes, your fish is overcooked. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Hopefully they will like it. Um, I've done my best. Um, I wouldn't change anything. That's me. Um, that's myself. That's my cooking. Um, hopefully they like it and that dish will bring me to the next stage. Yarek has cooked his rabbit in the bay on ham, served with sautéed potatoes with caramelised peaches. He's also prepared toasted brioche with goat's cheese and figs. The line of rabbit is nicely seasoned. I don't necessarily think you needed the other elements with it. For me, it's slightly underdone. And I don't necessarily think the peach suits the rabbit, to be honest with you. And then I have a little toast with goat cheese, is it? Yeah, goat cheese. How do I, do I eat everything together, or is that just like an added bonus? Um, what, was the, what was the thinking behind that? There was, uh, first of all, you should eat um, rabbit with the potato, um, bite with bite um, uh, the, uh, the brioche and, and the end um, for sweetness, to bring more sweetness, the peach. Okay. Everything doesn't come together very well. I think the peach doesn't look perfect and pretty. The toast isn't crispy. The potatoes are under seasoned. The rabbit is a little undercooked. I think you've tried to use too many ingredients. I just think you've taken too much on. You didn't have to pick everything. I think that was a mistake on your part today to do that. I think you've shot short today. Thank you. Thanks, Eric. Thanks, Eric. I think they could well say that it, it, the dish is a little bit simple. Hopefully they won't. Hopefully they'll think the flavour combination is, is good. Um, so hopefully they'll like it. Mary has prepared three toasted brioche with goat's cheese and compote of peaches topped with bayon ham and a fig slice. You might eat all this together? Yeah. Just a little bit, maybe maybe a small bit uh, too much goat's cheese. It's a little bit less to bring out the rest of the flavours, but I think you worked very well. I think you used the new ingredients today in a kind of way that reflects yesterday. I think you've um, done pretty kind of dainty food as Mary normally does. Thank you. I think that's very good. I think the uh, goat's cheese is perfect. A little sweetness. The fig, bay on ham. And um, the only thing is, yeah, maybe the, the toast should be crispier. But um, very tasty. Very nice with canopy. I think you should have the last one. Thank you. You're I welcome. will, actually. Well done, Mary. Thank you. <laughs> I absolutely don't think I've done enough, and I, would, I, I guarantee you I'm going home after that. Richard has cooked the Dorad fish with some sautéed potatoes and chervil hollandaise sauce. Uh, the potatoes are nicely seasoned. Could have done a bit more lemon juice with the fish. Um, hollandaise is OK, but I do think you had a bit of trouble with your fish. But I think you know that anyway. Yeah. The acidity is okay in the sauce. The seasoning is there. Yeah, I think you've. Um, no, I think you've done okay. You've done okay. Okay. Thanks, Thank guys. You. 
Shane has stuffed his saddle of rabbit with the brioche before wrapping it in the ham, and it is accompanied by a fig and lemon sauce and a potato rosti. I think it looks very pretty. I think you used ingredients very well. I love that you put the fig in the sauce. Uh, rosti, I wouldn't be convinced. For me, it's like closer to a, a potato bread. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... Um, I don't know, maybe it's an Irish twist. <laughs> but uh, definitely not a rusty. But um, it's fine, not a bad job. Thank you. Okay. Mm, nice sauce. Sweetness. Got nice of the lemon coming through. So it's nice with the stuffing. I do think that the rabbit is overcooked, and what happens is because you stuff it and then you wrap it by own ham, obviously the juices do don't really remain in there because they're soaked up by all the, uh, the stuffing that you've, you've done. But it is very pretty. In all fairness, you have done the task justice because you've used the ingredients that were given to you, you've thought about it, you've shown a bit of technique. So, you know, well done. Thanks very much. Thanks so much. Guys, if I can please ask you to leave the room while myself and Dylan make the difficult decision. Thank you. Well, I think it was quite intriguing to see why people made different choices. Say the likes of Richard, he avoided most of the ingredients in the box. Hit behind um, the box, basically. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm so. surprised at him. I think that Mary, you know, could kind of um, elaborated on what she'd learned yesterday. But it was just simple three canapes. You're expecting more from that yeah, than what we've seen. I was. Yeah, I was. But it was tasty. Yeah. What did you think of Yarek today? Um, he was very uncomfortable with those ingredients. He was very unsure of himself, and I think he sort of played at it, mixed and matched around. Today he seemed so uncertain, so underconfident, mm. um, just a real he lack of in his food, belief. Didn't he? Yeah. What was your thought on Christine? She did overcook the fish. For me today, she shocked me. But she continued to push and she continues to try, and I think that's admir admirable. Yeah, she's a battler, and I think she yeah. will learn from these mistakes today, you know, and yeah. I think that's, that's commendable. I mean, I think she's so much more interesting to watch sometimes than so much safer. I thought that Shane did a great job. I mean, I wasn't a fan of the Rosties, but it was a good citrus kick to the stuffing. He made a nice sauce using the figs. Um, I just thought that he, he consistently cooked another good dish. Thank you for all your French dishes. Unfortunately, only one of you will not be going through to the next round. Yarek, I'm really sorry, it is you. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Yarek. Well Good luck, Yarek. The MasterChef experience was an amazing time for me. It was very stressful but enjoyable. It was like a roller coaster. I was down and then up. Um, yeah, I think inside me is more to show, more to give. Um, um, I really love cooking. Um, I have a passion for cooking. For them, maybe it wasn't my days, but unfortunately, um, my time is over. I'm not going to stop cooking. I'm going to keep cooking and cooking and cooking. <laughs> Next time on MasterChef. Ladies and gentlemen, you're very welcome to the sixth outing of the John Murray Show Walking Club. There's 300 people coming in for lunch, so that means you have to get this plated up in one minute. Didn't prepare, prepare enough courgettes for 100 dishes. I actually have not one doubt in my head that we're going to win today. We're definitely going to win today. After all that, the contestants face the ultimate test. Probably the most nervous I've felt coming into an elimination day. 
I think there's every chance that I'm going home this evening. Yeah, I want it pretty badly. <laughs>